Oh, wow. Is, it, is there not enough coffee? Okay, let's try this again. Good morning. Thank you. For those who wish to use uh, the, the, you know, there are some uh, trans transcription screens available up near the front. So it's not like church. You have to come up to the front to see those transcription screens. Um, but if you want to access the transcription on your mobile device, go to the link otter.ai slash web summit. Once again, that is otter, that's O-T-T-E-R dot A-I slash web summit. And there they have an automatic, automated trans, uh, transcription service powered by AI because this is the deep tech stage where we're all about that deep tech and that ne next new thing. So otter.ai slash web summit. Okay, so this first talk, has anybody noticed this giant, it's very scary looking bottle up here? Anybody notice? If you didn't raise your hand, you need to come closer, okay? So this very, very scary bottle is filled with liquid nitrogen. Do you know what liquid nitrogen is? Liquid nitrogen is a very, very cold gas that will freeze things fairly instantly. And we are going to spray one lucky volunteer with the liquid nitrogen. Do we have a volunteer, right? No? No? Any volunteers? A couple of volunteers? Yeah? Sorry, we already have one. Because they have to be wearing the, the material from Oros. So Oros is best known for its use of space age aerogel developed from NASA technology used to insulate shuttles. This material is thinner, warmer, and more flexible than its predecessors. Here to tell you about this material, um, this future of material science, please welcome to the stage, Michael Marksberry. Hey everybody, I'm Michael Marksberry, uh, co-founder and CEO of Oros. How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? That's a little better. Uh, so today we're talking about the future of materials. And to create materials, uh, that takes materials science. So first question is, you know, what is materials science? And materials science is all about three things. It's when physics, chemistry, and product engineering all marry together. And within material science, you have a couple different things, a couple of different major fields. You have your semiconductors, you have your biomaterials, you have your nanomaterials, and then you also have your synthetics. And there's some incredible innovation going on within each of these fields. If you have ever heard of Matrix Industries, they're doing some amazing things in semiconductors. There's another company that's actually here at Web Summit called Typa that's made the first ever completely compostable packaging. So when you think about sustainability, they're going to completely change the world of packaging and their biomaterials. Uh, there's some amazing things going on in nanomaterials as well. Uh, but today we're going to be focused on synthetics and specifically uh, one synthetic material uh, uh, as a whole. But before we talk about that material, I have a quick story for you. So uh, my sophomore year of university, I went backpacking across Europe. And the coolest thing I did is I climbed the tallest mountain in the Northeast Swiss Alps. It was an amazing experience, uh, except for one thing. I looked a lot uh, like this guy. Tons of bulk, tons of layers. And so I remember thinking, you know, there has to be a way to cut the bulk, cut the layers, and still stay warm. Uh, came back to the US, I started looking at different brands and different products, all within the outerwear and performance apparel space. And what was interesting is I saw, e even since the beginning of time, that all performance apparel and outerwear had one thing in common. You needed all of this bulk and layers to stay warm. 
And that's because you have two options today. Whenever you insulate yourself, you're either using goose down, an animal byproduct, or you're using some type of synthetic insulation. Both of those things need this thing called loft or bulk to work. So it didn't make sense. You know, I saw this opportunity within this industry to use material science uh, to change how we think about outerwear and apparel. And material science over the next 10 years will impact a lot of different industries, this industry included. As we look at this industry, I see one of the biggest impacts in material science coming from this material called aerogel. Has anyone heard of aerogel before? That's probably the highest percentage of people I've ever seen uh, answer that answer yes, that's awesome. Uh, so for those of you that haven't heard of aerogel, aerogel is the same technology that NASA used to insulate their Mars rovers. Aerogel is known as the lowest thermal conductive solid in existence. And what that means is per unit thickness is the best insulation in the universe. So good that NASA was using this stuff in space. And space uh, is negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit on occasion. I, I don't know what the conversion into Celsius is, but I can tell you that that's really, 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 really cold. So, uh, you know, you have this amazing insulation. How come this insulation hasn't been used in apparel? It's been around for a long time. Well, it turns out that aerogel is incredibly brittle. If you poke it, shatters into a thousand little pieces really bad news bears for apparel. So at Oros, we took these aerogel particles and created the first ever flexible non-shedding aerogel in the world. It's called SolarCore. And SolarCore has two big benefits over every other insulation in the world. One is warmth. So we've tested it against 250 different insulations to date using ASTM C518 uh, and have yet to find one that actually beats it. That's pretty cool. But more important than warmth is this idea called loft. So since day one in the outerwear industry, we've struggled with loft. Loft, uh, take for example, goose down. The way goose down works is it traps air. And the more air we trap, the more insulation we get. The problem is air takes volume or space. So the more air you funnel in there, the puffier and puffier your jacket gets till you end up looking like the Michelin man. That's not true with solar core. So solar core under compression at 15 PSI, no airspace, maintains 97% of its thermal performance. And so what that means is for the first time in history, you can have a thin amount of insulation, put it into a garment, and actually maintain thermal performance, which is pretty cool. So as we look at this industry, we see two big trends happening. Uh, and this just isn't at Oros, it's across the board. We see people creating apparel that is less bulky, and warmer. So at Oros, we asked ourselves, you know, how much warmer? Uh, and, and that's something we intend to show you today. So this is a tank of liquid nitrogen. Uh, liquid nitrogen is, I'm gonna set this down right here. Liquid nitrogen is negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 196 Celsius. Uh, and this, these are oranges. This is, a, this is a cooking pan. I have a knife here too, hold on one second. So I'm just gonna take, I don't know why there's three of these in here, hold on. I'm gonna take this orange, I'm gonna cut it in half. We've all seen that before. I'm gonna take this orange and we're gonna slice off another piece. Do the same thing over here. We should have done this beforehand, but here we are. Cool, put that right in the pot. It's kind of like a cooking show. Okay. Cool, are we ready? Yeah? So this is to show you how cold liquid nitrogen actually is. So here we go.
think that should be good enough. What do you guys think? Okay. Let's put that right back in there. Cool. So, uh, it's pretty frozen. Um, I'm going to pass this around. I don't know if you guys can see this. Cool. Um, can I pass this to you? Cool. Can, do you have a glove? Okay, cool. And so be kind of careful. Cool. Should be a little bit more frozen. It's cool. You got it? Okay, cool. Uh, so that's what you don't want to happen. Uh, and so I have my lovely assistant, Katie. Uh, she's wearing some Oros product, that's our Orion Parka, which is insulated with solar core. And we're just gonna very quickly spray her with liquid nitrogen and, and we're gonna see, you know, see what happens. Okay, Katie, are you ready? Cool. Okay. How are you feeling? A lot less frozen than warm. Nice. Can we get a round of applause for Katie, please? Thank you. That's cool. Her back's still smoking. So, uh, cool. You know, so we look at material science and what material science is allowing us to do is completely rethink how we view certain industries. You're not just making things better, you're making things different, which is incredibly cool. Uh, so for Oros, we're beginning to rethink how we do and make and wear outerwear. Uh, so we briefly talked about, you know, where the industry is gonna be in five years, uh, but I, I believe in grand visions. So I think what's really important to ask is where is the industry going to be in 10 years? Uh, and, and at Oros, we, we <laughs> our mission uh, with material science uh, from day one has been to make a long sleeve t-shirt that you can wear sub-freezing and still stay warm. So not just thinner, or warmer outerwear, but completely getting rid of the necessity of outerwear entirely. So all you need is a long sleeve t-shirt to stay warm. And by the way, you're the first group of people to ever hear that. We're looking at 2022 commercialization. We're working with some great partners like NASA, and that is Oros's goal, mission, and vision since day one. Uh, and so, you know, a, a, a lot of people think that innovation has had its day. A lot of people think you know, that, that all the great inventions have already happened uh, and, and believe that you know, we've reached our limits as humanity. And what Oro says, and I think what everyone here at Web Summit would say to those people is, what limits? And so you know, with that, that's all I have. I'm really glad that you guys had the opportunity to come and sit down with me. And, Thank you so much.